we're going to start um, a new project. Um, this is the second part of my uh, DVD. We're going to create a toolpath. In our first part of our DVD, we just created a, a geometry. We created a whole bunch of solids and surfaces. And now we get into a more complicated uh, programming part, creating the toolpath. Uh, Kutia, as well known, works with uh, different um, windows at the time. So if you want to create a, uh, a geometry, we're going to have a different window, which is called uh, shape design. And we can work with part design, so we, we're not going to have all of them all together. So for example, uh, once we're going to create our geometry or our surfaces, it doesn't matter, uh, part design or uh, shape design, then we can go to toolpath. What happened over here, uh, I'm going to teach you how to go to advanced machining. We have a couple of steps of programming. We have uh, 2D, 3D, and we have a prismatic, basically that's a 2D, and we have a surfacing machining. But advanced machining has got all of these uh, operations that I just mentioned, 2D, 3D, all the four taxes, everything has got it all five axes. It's all on this module right here. So if I'm going to show you how to use advanced machining, it's going to be so much easier instead of uh, learning one thing at a time and getting all confused. So... Um, I'm going to start uh, the advanced machining. So for example, uh, let's pull, a, uh, let's make a quick part and a part design and create a quick toolpath on it. So what I'm going to do just, I'm going to create a quick sketch just for the heck of it. I'm going to go to this option right here to create a sketch on this plane. And I'm going to create a quick pad. Click OK. And let's create a, uh, a pocket over here. We can click on this sketch and on this surface. And we're going to create a quick pocket over here. We're going to throw some fillets. Let's go half inch deep. So we have a quick part, right? So like for example, we finish, we finish the geometry and we want to make a pocket to machine this pocket inside in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put uh, start and we'll go to advanced machining. And as you see right now, this is our axis, this is our part, this is all of our operations. And um, in order to throw our toolpath, our pocket operation in here, we got to set up first um, the machine. What I'm going to show you first, uh, before we go any further, I want to make sure that um, I'm going to give you a, a tool lab library that I, uh, I already have, and uh, we don't have to create, create uh, your own tool, uh, tool library, and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. So every time we start a, a advanced machining, very first thing we have to set it up. So first thing is uh, we double click on part operation and we get our part operation window. So every time we have to get uh, familiar and used to that, we always have to do this. Uh, before I do this, I'm gonna cancel this for a quick second because I want to create uh, my plane and my uh, boundary box, my stock material. So I'm just going to cancel this for one quick second. 
and I'm gonna go back to my uh, part so as you see right here we got um, the, once I click on the part design icons change once I click on the toolpath icons change so I'm gonna go back in here or you can go windows switch back and forth so I'm gonna go to part design for one quick second and I'm gonna build I need a surface there is one option over here that uh, they will need to have on so we gotta make sure we pull that out So let's try to open uh, some of those. Uh... Oh, I don't see it in here. Section reconcile. I don't see it in here. I might be in the shape design. There we go, surface machining tools. That's what I was looking for. So let's go back in here and let's turn this option on. I'm gonna lock this again. This will allow us to create a rough a rough stock material. So we can create it or can we import the STL file? So you can click import and then it's gonna ask you where you're importing from or you can uh, create our own. So for now, I'm just gonna create uh, our axis and I'm gonna create this box right here. So this is gonna be my uh, my stock material. I'm gonna make a one inch. So as you see how I got my stock material. So in the real life, it knows that this is my block of material, whatever it is, it can be aluminum, stainless steel, doesn't matter. So automatically create a folder over here, it's called a rough stack. So it knows it's a stack material. So right now let's go back to our um, advanced machining. Oh, by the way, we have to create, let's go back, let's create our um, reference plane. So let's create a plane. I'm gonna insert uh, a geometrical set. I'm just gonna put it in here. And uh, as you see, this is defined on the work object. So if I do defined, if I create right now a plane, it's automatically going to be created into this folder. But if I go define and work objects, everything that I'm going to create it from this point on is going to go underneath this folder. So I'm going to click on this plane and I'm going to put offset from a plane. So we get a couple options we can choose from. And I'm going to bring a little bit above the part. Click OK. This is going to be my clearance plane. I want to make sure my tool retracts will go up to this point. So we've got to keep uh, this in mind. Those two things we have to create before we switch to advanced, machi advanced machining. We've got to have the rough and the clearance plane. So now we can go back and I uh, advanced machining. We got our axis x, y, zero. We can move our axis uh, whatever we want. For example, let's say this is our part. We can move our axis in this corner, or we can move it in this corner. As a matter of fact, let's do that right now while we play with it. See our axis system, it's automatically in, in here, it's a default. But we can create our own. So this icon down here is called axis system. So if you click on it, it's going to ask us X, Y, Z direction. So if you click on X, you can tell I want this X and I want this H to be Y. It's upside down, but there's no problem if you click reverse and you want Y to go the other direction, you just click reverse and watch what happen. We, we created our axis, but if you want to move it on the other corner, we go to a selection and say, I want to put it on this corner. Or we can put the again origin and you can put it on this corner. 
or you can click here, you can put it on this corner. So whatever you feel familiar with, just move it in the right uh, place. Click OK. Now, as you see, this became our default axis. It's all straight line and this is a dotted line. So this is the active one. If you do a right click, you see over here is set. Uh, if you click set as uh, set as not accurate as not current, right now they're not both of them. They're not, they're not active. So I'm gonna activate this because I'm gonna use this as my first operation. So I'm gonna go to properties, right click, go to properties, and I'm gonna call this my first operation. And I'm gonna turn this off. Go to right click, high show. Turn this up. So this is going to be my XY0. Let's go back to advanced machining. And uh, look what happened because we didn't set up our XY. It knows my XY0 is right here. So we have to tell it that this is our original axis. Okay, so let's go back to part operation. We call it over here first up. And I usually like to put my machine name. Just to make sure I know what kind of machine I'm using. If you have any comments, just put it in here. Now, on the machine, we always have to make sure we go through all this before we click OK. We have to make, we always have to do this. So let's click on the machine and let's make sure we say it's a five axis machine. Because if you don't click five axis machine over here, once you create a five axis uh, geometry, I mean five axis tool pattern here, once we're gonna make the code, we're gonna create our APT code. Our code is not gonna be a five axis code, it's gonna be a three axis code, even though the tool pad shows five axis. So we have to, we have to make sure we specify, we specify the right machine before we move forward. So we got the machine. On catalog, the thing that I just wanted to show to you, this is a whole bunch of samples. And over here it's got, you know, for example, let's choose tool sample one. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean. I'm going to give you my own library, so you don't have to use the sample one. It's already built up if you feel comfortable. Over here we use the cutter comp. So if you, want, if you use the cutter comp, you turn it on over here. It's going to ask you, you have to turn this off first. So this is the cutter comp in here. And uh, numerical control. I usually use, uh, I also have my own PP table for APT source because it's pretty uh, easy, but uh, if you feel comfortable, this always works the best. APT is the sample. So we're gonna leave it as a sample for now. And uh, that's the only thing we change over here. This is the spindle home position, but the only thing we change is uh, the tools. We have to we have to pick up our library and color compensation and the sample of your uh, post processor. So I I always use the PP table sample, and your output is going to be a APT. Um, most of uh, the best uh, TM output it's APT and if you have a Haas machine uh, there are uh, companies out there they will take the APT and they convert it into NC or whatever your machine can read so um, for now we're gonna just uh, create APT only okay so once we create uh, once we set all this we're gonna click OK so we just get out of here, out of our machine. Now we have to go next to um, create our axis. See our axis right now, it's over here, but we have to make sure we specify our new axis. So let's click on axis and click anywhere on the red area. Okay, and it's gonna ask you to select your um, uh, on the bottom uh, left hand corner it says select an, ax select an axis and we just click on the new axis that we just created earlier and automatically it's going to snap in place and I always like to type in here put a little bit of space 
because I don't like to see all this in here. And I just click over here, first operation, top. Click enter. And this is our first operation access right there. Click OK. We don't mess with this right now. We just leave this alone. Now we go to our, um, our part. We have to uh, select our part. because the, the reason we do this, so we can watch the verify. So I uh, see it says right here for simulation only. So uh, we got to uh, select our part, which is in here. This is our part. Just highlight it and then double click twice over here. So we get our window back. Then it's going to ask us for the stock material. So let's click on the stock. And our rough stock is this. So click on this folder and double click twice on the empty area. And then it's going to ask us for our safety plane. Click on the plane. Let's come over here. And that's our safety plane. Position, simulation, options. Don't mess with this now. It's a, a way too advanced, and then we don't do any simulations with the machines and tool changes and all that. I pretty much leave those alone, those options over here. So once we set up our machine, we set up our axis, we pick our um, part. That's why we have to make sure every time we create our part, we have to make sure that this folder is the part only. Uh, that's why we have to make sure not to have a uh, whole bunch of geometry on one folder. So if this is one part, let's keep it separate folders because once we do the verify and we have, for example, on this level over here, we have a couple different, couple different uh, parts, we got to get an error once we're going to try to run our simulation program. So it's very important that we keep... Uh, everything in different folders and uh, subfolders and we're going to be very easy for us to click on them and uh, see for enough for stock we know what it is part we know what it is so it's very comfortable safety plane we know what it is so basically right now we ready to create some toolpaths so once again um, this is already create your machine you have to tell it what kind of machine you use what kind of tool catalog you're using. If you use a card compensation and your PPT table, you gotta choose it right here. So over here to machine, over here once again is our axis. Uh, if you have your own axis or different axis, make sure you click on this area, highlight your um, axis, Type the part number in here or operation number in here. Click OK. Then we go to um, part. We gotta define our part, which is right in here. We created a pad and the pocket. So this is our main part. Then we created uh, the stock, which is right here. This is our stock. Then our safety plane is right here. So let's click OK. And for now, we don't need. Uh, the stock anymore because you know we want to see the pocket and the part much better so we can turn this off by doing a right click hide show so we turn that off and uh, let's make a quick pocket in here now um, every time we create a uh, operation if you click on this it doesn't know where to put it so it's asking us for the reference operation to insert. So if you read down the bottom over here, it's always telling us what to do. So it's gonna ask us, what do you wanna put it after? And then once I click on this operation uh, manufacturing program, automatically it's gonna create my um, operation on the bottom over here. So this is my pocket. So for now, I'm just gonna do uh, a quick uh, I didn't select the tool, it's automatically picking the standard tool. So that's a quick, uh, that's a quick operation right there. I'm just gonna click OK for now. I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm not gonna mess with any settings. I just wanna make sure that we go um, 
uh, pretty good at this first. So, uh, so um, we just create a quick uh, pocket right now. But what I want to do, for example, you want to create different uh, manufacturers in here, right? So once you click on this, for example, you want to create new, more manufacturing. We got the same thing on the bottom right here. It says select the reference operation to insert a new op one after it. So once we click on this, we get a new app, a new manufacturing program. So we can uh, create, so you click on it, click over here. So you can create as many as we can if you want to keep this organized. So if you want to have just uh, pocketing, pocketings over here, if you want to have only drilling over here, it's, it's up to you. So for now, if I want to put, uh, let's say, a, a facing operation, I just click on the facing, then I'm going to click on this manufacturing, and automatically it's going to put, see, my facing operation under this level. So I create a, a quick uh, operation program. So I'm, I'm just fly cutting the top of the part. So um, that's how we create uh, manufacturing uh, programs. Now uh, let's go back. Um, I still did. Uh, I'm still not gonna. I'm not going to explain now how to use the pocketing operations only. Now I just create a quick and dirty just to show you pretty quick. But let's go uh, just for other tools right now. So for example, see over here, I'm going to minimize everything. We have on manufacturing uh, operations, we have the process list, product list, and resources list. We always going to work with uh, resources and process. The product it's all we create the geometry. So this is our part. All the toolpath and all the geometry goes in here. So we don't worry about this now. This gets cre created on the part design or a shape design. That's where this gets created. So those two gets created over here. All the tools goes under this right here. So um, right now we have a five axis machine. It goes in here. If you create another three axis machine, it goes in here. So all the resources goes in here. Product geometry goes in here. And the toolpath goes in here. So for example, right now we created this um, standard toolpath with the standard tool. Automatically it picked up this tool on its own. It's a default tool. Because we've been using the sample uh, uh, the sample table. So let's go back in the pocketing. Let's go to the tools and let's see what kind of tools we're using over here. So we can click here and it's telling us that we use tools sample 01. We can switch this and then see we get different kind of tools in here. But they're not, um, they have they're some odd numbers, 787 diameter, ball and, ball and mill, 393. So uh, there is, they always got some weird uh, numbers. I don't know, it's nothing, it's uh, inches like the way I want it. They have a whole bunch of stuffs, stuff in here, but it's not... Uh, not the way I want it. So what I did, we I have a uh, a tool library. We can load it in here, and we can open uh, my tool library. So every time we're gonna set up uh, these uh, operations, we're gonna come in here and pull up uh, my library, and then that was gonna be much easier for us. So uh, let's go before we move forward. Let's go put my tools, my tool library in here. So I'm gonna cancel this. See, look at this tool number, it's 393. And I'm not gonna use this. So what I have over here, I have, um, my catalog, 
to library. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this uh, file and I'm going to paste it in the folder with the manufacturing where Katia is at. So if we go to program files, the whole system, B17 folder, Intel A, startup, manufacturing tools, and if we paste it in here, we're going to use my library. So like now let's go back to Katia and let's go back to our uh, operation setup. Let's go back to uh, machine and on the numerical control, last tab, no, on the tooling. Let's go on the tools catalog and then we should be able to see SAMI tool library. So let's click OK. Let's go OK over here, click OK, and let's go back to my pocketing operation. And let's go to the tools. And let's see the difference. See how nice and organized the tools are? So we got one inch flat ball, flat ball. So this is uh, much, uh, much better. So you can choose your tools from here. So we can customize it. You can create your own tools and save them to the library. But uh, for now, this is pretty good. This is uh, standard diameters. And uh, for example, let's say uh, we want to choose a one inch flat. Let's click on one inch, one inch ball, uh, three quarter flat. Click OK. And you can customize it. Uh, even my uh, operation, even though I said it's a 750, for some reason it puts this radius in here. But you can double click on it and make a zero, make a sharp corner. And uh, you get your tool over here customized. You can put the tool length in here. Let's make it two inches, two inches, and let's make the holder. 2.2 that's a standard size and over here the tool number one this it's telling us that already we already have a tool number one so it doesn't like to have two tool number one so if you click OK I'm gonna recompute this and as you see right now this is our new tool and uh, I'm just gonna come back in here click on this tool Click delete and get it out of there because we don't use it anymore. I'm just going to double click back on this. Go pretty quick uh, uh, through a couple options in here. So those are the tabs that you can select uh, tools, operations, lead in, lead out, feeds and speeds. So um, for example, right now it has outward helical. You can put inward, it changes the position, or back and forth. It's a, a zigzag. Now you can put over here climb. See, it's got the little auto uh, question mark over here. So if you click on this, if you don't know what this stands for, just click on this and we'll let you know. See, this is the rotation of the end mill. So the end mill rotates uh, clockwise and it's moving forward this way. See the arrow going this way and the tool rotates this way. So everything is climbing. So I'm pretty sure that uh, all the programmers that is out there, they know that most of the programs, they need to be climbing. Rare we find programs that we get a nice finish using conventional. So I, I very rarely use conventional. I always leave, leave this on climb all the time. I never change it. Over here is the tolerance. You can see over there. Radial is asking us over here the tool diameter. So you just put over here your kind of like a step over. So right now it's 50%. So the the step over ratio is 50%. Or we can put to distance. So right now we'll put the step over 375. Step over from here to here. We get 375. Or we can put the step over ratio or maximum distance. 
they show you right here the difference but I like uh, ratio the best 50% of the tool then we have radial was going sideways as you see axial goes up and down so it's asking us how many uh, depth, depth of cuts do we want so just click on this and it will tell you one two three four so let's say we want to cut this three times and let's make the depth of cut we cannot select it right now but if we change this to uh, numbers of levels without the top because we didn't select the top yet we just put without the top right here so now it's gonna tell us okay this right here it stands for the thickness so we put 200 over here and three times it's gonna ask us if you want to make any finish passes we can say yes make uh, one finish pass at last level so you click on this and it will show you what it does green is the last pass so it shows us it's going to finish the bottom and the wall at the bottom so um, it's asking us for the thickness so the thickness from here to here we want it 20,000 then it's, it's going to ask us number uh, of side finish passes by level so it's going to ask us how many passes do we want it says one bottom thickness and side finish pass side thickness at bottom everything is common sense and then if you don't know what it does you just click on the question mark see bottom finish let's make this 20,000 so right now I just give it a finish on the bottom and a finish on the wall if you want to put the spring packs just click over here compensation output has got none you can put a if you want to put cutter comp you just click on a 2d radial tape or profile whatever is convenient and over here is going to ask us the floor where's the floor and the counter and what is the top see one is green that means it's already selected if it's brown like this it's not selected so right now i gotta put my top of part it's over here so now you got green also and you have a couple options you can play with so you can put open pocket close pocket so in our case this is a close pocket it's gonna ask us the offset on the boundary offset on the counter offset on the bottom how much you want to stay away from the bottom from the counter and if we have um, a clamp over here we can put uh, the dimension on a check surface now this next tab over here it's a uh, selection of the tools so to select the tool once again you just click on a select a tool and automatically it's going to pop up the library that, that we just inserted this is our custom uh, sami tool library what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this uh, file into the dvd and if you have uh, you guys have already katia maybe you can copy and paste it i already show you the location and so you'll be able to get this uh, nice uh, library in here so click whatever tool you want and then you click ok then you get a tool over here and you can um, customize it the tool length if you need if you have radius and also you can change the diameter you can change it to 700 if you want okay so let's go next next is our speeds and uh, feeds and speeds so let's say we want to approach the part at 20 inches yeah i was trying to put inches sometimes it recognizes that but i'm just going to make it 20. It says 20 millimeter, but once you're going to post that out, it's going to be 20 feet rate, which is going to be inches. Retract will make it 100. Let's go a little faster. 50 feet rate. And um, this is our RPM. So for the three quarter end mill, if we have a carbide, we'll usually go around 6,500 RPM. And let's put the quality of this program uh, finish. We want to look a nice finish to this part. Let's go to the last tab. 
feeds uh, the way we lead in and lead out into this part. So it's asking us over here, approaching, uh, retracting from the part. So let's say approach from the part. We want to um, ramp once we're gonna come into the part. So we go here, click on the ramping. Then we go to uh, build by user and we can put a um, add the um, axial motion up to a plane so what we want to do we want to come from this plane that i just created come down and then wrap it i mean ramp it into the part so i'm just going to click on this and automatically we get this uh, rapid and the plane so i just click on this and i'm going to select my plane and automatically knows on the macro that this is my uh, plane. We also can um, edit this uh, 394 the ramping distance. We just double click on this. We can change it, for example, 250. And if you double click on the ramping, we can change this length. For example, we want to make it a little bit bigger, so we'll make this 500 half inch, vertical distance from here to here is 250, a ramping angle from here to here is, it says it's 20, we can make it 10, let's click OK, so this is our ramping, now retracting, we just said uh, you can create as many as you want, but if you made a mistake, you just can uh, delete them all, so I'm just going to make only one rapid to my clearance plane, so I'm going to ramp in, and uh, wrap it out once I get out. But see, right now we have approaching to the finish pass, retracting from the finish pass. So to activate those guys, you just do a click on it, then do a right click and active. And automatically, you see over here, they get yellow. Once we define this and uh, recompute it, they're gonna become green. So right now I'm gonna deactivate those two guys. I'm just gonna, before I get too complicated, I just wanna go a little step at a time. So as you see right here, we got the, our ramping, which is huge. We can uh, take it down a notch if we want to. So this is our ramping that will comes here. We can view this step by step. So we can rewind. And if we click right here, uh, which one is it? I think it's this guy. So if we go step by step, we can see every little step what the part is doing. So it ramped into the part, the one here. So we can see every step of the way. But if you want to jump, 10 steps at a time, we just click 10. So on each click, see, it jumped 10, 10 uh, steps at a time. So this is 10 steps. And if you want to play it normal, just go back to this. Let's rewind it and click play. And uh, this is our pocket. Now, if we want to watch the demo, the simulation, that's why it was very important when I first started. We have to define our stock material. We have to define this stock. We have to define our safety plane and the part in order to use this. So right now, if we click on this, we have a couple options. I'm just gonna click on this right now so we can see this is our part that we just uh, defined. This is our stock material. So if I click play right now, we can see the tool coming in there and machining the pocket. And what we can do, we can save this. We can save this result and can pull it up later. And uh, we can uh, keep on going from there. So I'm going to keep this. It says it already, it's already stored. Click OK. I want to click OK over here. And over here on my pocket, we get this blue mark. And it tells us that 
already have a previous operation stored in there. So we can change this as much as you want, just double click on it. We can change it instead of back and forth, inward. And right now because we selected the top, we can go back over here. And on axial, remember we just selected the numbers of levels without the top. We can put the maximum depth of cut. And it knows that our top is over here.